Abigail Powers was possibly born in Stillwater, New York, United States of America, in 1798. She was the youngest of seven children born to Reverend Lumiel Leonard Powers, a Baptist minister, and Abigail Newland Powers. Abigail grew up in Morovia, New York. Her father died shortly after her birth, and her mother moved the family westward, thinking her scanty funds would go further in a less settled region. She was able to educate her small son and daughter beyond the usual frontier education with the help of her late husband's library. After moving to Cayuga County, New York, by wagon train, they moved in with Cypress Powers. Young Abigail came to love literature and also became proficient in other subjects such as math, government, philosophy, and geography. After finishing school, she became a teacher. In 1814, Abigail became a part-time school teacher at Sempronius Village School. In 1817, she became a full-time teacher, and in 1819, she took on another teaching job and began to teach at the private New Hope Academy. Then in 1824, she became a private tutor to three of her cousins. She was then asked to open up a private school, which she opened. However, in 1825, Abigail went back to Sempronius Village to teach in her original position. In 1819, she took a teaching post at the New Academy in New Hope, New York, where her oldest pupil was 19-year-old Millard Fillmore. The world of knowledge and Fillmore's steady progress in it drew them together, and gradually their relationship of teacher and student evolved into a romantic attachment. After a long courtship, Millard, age 26, and Abigail, age 27, were married on February 5, 1826, by the Reverend Orosius H. Smith, at the home of the bride's brother, Judge Powers, in Morovian, New York. Without a honeymoon, they settled at East Aurora, New York, Mrs. Fillmore continued to teach school until the birth of her first son in 1828. She shared her husband's love of books and helped build their personal library. Abigail Fillmore later gave birth to Mary Abigail Fillmore in 1832. Attaining prosperity at last, Millard Fillmore bought his family a six-room house in Buffalo, New York. Enjoying comparative luxury, Abigail learned the ways of society as the wife of a U.S. congressman. She cultivated a noted flower garden, but much of her time, as always, she spent reading. In 1814, when Millard Fillmore was elected New York State Comptroller, the family temporarily moved to Albany, New York. In 1849, Abigail Fillmore came to Washington, D.C. as the wife of the Vice President Millard Fillmore. She thereby became the second lady of the United States. Sixteen months later, after President Zachary Taylor's death, the Fillmores moved into the executive mansion, and she became first lady. When Abigail first moved into the presidential mansion, she was reportedly appalled at the fact that there was no library in it. With a special appropriation of $2,000 from Congress, she spent contended hours selecting books for an executive mansion library. In the library was Shakespeare, history and geography books, and her piano. She invited writers such as William Thackeray, Charles Dickens, and Washington Irving to meet with her. When her husband was away, he wrote her letters about politics, and she would write back offering him advice and counsel on political matters. In fact, he valued her opinion so much that he reportedly never made any important decision without first consulting her. Some history suggests that Abigail advised her husband to not sign the Fugitive Slave Act, which he did sign in the end, in turn losing his nomination for a second term, as Abigail predicted would happen if he signed the act. Excited about their life post-presidency, Abigail and Millard discussed traveling through Europe in the months coming. At the outdoor inaugural ceremonies of Franklin Pierce in 1853, she caught a cold and the next day came down with a fever, which turned into bronchitis and then developed into pneumonia. At age 55, Abigail died just 26 days after leaving the executive mansion on March 30, 1853 at the Willard Hotel in Washington, D.C. Her sudden and quick death became the most widely reported death of a first lady. She was buried at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Buffalo, New York.